video we'll be talking about the regeneration in hydra which is also known as morphalaxis so this is a high yield video stay tuned till the end you would have this concept clear within next 10 minutes so hydra is a freshwater animal which belongs to the phylum nidaria and hydra has a very simple body plan it has kind of like a tail which is known as basal disc there is a head kind of structure known as hypostome there are tentacles and there could be buds now if you zoom into the body wall of hydra we would see there are two basic layers one is endodermal epithelial cell another is ectodermal epithelial cells by the way hydra is diploblastic so it would have only two layers now among these two layers there would be heterogeneity in cell type there are different types of cells like nematocyte there are nematoblast interstitial stem cells sensory neurons gland cells epithelial epithelial cells of course that we talked about now all of these cell types are essential for the function of the hydra now hydra has a huge capacity of regeneration so this is an adult hydra and imagine a situation uh, where you have amputated the middle part of the hydra so it is cut into two halves from the middle and each of these two halves can eventually regenerate to give rise to the entire hydra but the question is how does the segment which is below know where to make the head and how how to make the head there and how does the segment on the top knows where to make the basal plate so this precision of regeneration is another question that we should think in our head we should understand what are the molecular mechanism of this process now before starting that let me tell you please smash that uh, subscribe button and tell your friends about our videos regeneration is seen in different phyla of animal kingdom and the regenerative potential decreases as we go up in the strata so hydra planaria they have amazing potential of differentiation entire organism can be basically uh, regenerated whereas amphibian has a little bit less capacity they can regrow their limbs but not the entire body but anyway in mammals the potency decreases and only some organs could be regenerated and we also talked about previously the four methods or mechanism by which regeneration can possibly happen one is stem cell mediated regeneration epimorphosis morphalaxis and compensatory regeneration in stem cell regeneration there are dedicated stem cells which regrow uh, differentiated cells in case of epimorphosis dedifferentiation happens and there is a transient state called blastema which forms again a mature cell by the process of redifferentiation today's our focus is on morphalaxis in this case transdifferentiation happens means like one mature body uh, body cell becomes another mature cell type so it's basically transdifferentiation also compensatory regeneration we cover in a different video so morphalaxis is a important formula of regeneration we can say so in hydra both morphalaxis and epimorphosis kind of formula underlying regeneration can be seen and we have to appreciate that in the subsequent uh, lecture so basically morphalactic regeneration can be understood by this simple experiment so here we are amputating the head of the hydra and imagine the head part is lost and we are now looking at in this uh, overall body part which has to make a head possibly on that region it turns out just after the amputation in underlying the injury site there is an upregulation of a morphogen known as wnt3 wnt3 belongs to that wnt beta catenin signaling module and it's really important wnt3 upregulation leads to remodeling of the existing cell in the head there is no proliferation involved in this case and hence it's a morphalactic regeneration it's trans differentiation it's not a proliferation based regeneration eventually these uh, region would remodel and ultimately form the tentacles and the head part of the hydra so this is known as the morphalactic regeneration and this happens in hydra but this is not the only form of regeneration that can possibly happen in the hydra epimorphic regeneration is also seen in hydra 
Now imagine the same experiment. In this case, you would amputate the middle part of the hydra. And in this case, we are looking at the lower segments. So if in the lower segment, it has to make the head, then there are many challenges. So basically, first of all, just below the injury site, all the body cells, especially which are interstitial stem cell derivative, would undergo apoptosis. But just before apoptosis, they would hugely upregulate the wind 3 there would be a wave of wind 3 this wave of wind 3 triggers wind beta catenin signaling in the residual interstitial stem cells which proliferate rapidly and regenerates several derivatives of these interstitial stem cells so it's kind of like a regeneration of the lost cell types at the same time there would be also epithelial remodeling conversion of the ectodermal and endodermal epithelia into different shapes and sizes and a combination of these two ultimately regenerate the head part so this kind of head part uh, this kind of regeneration is known as epimorphic regeneration because stem cells are involved similar kind of methodology is used in salamander rim limb regeneration so we can see there are different formula of the regenerative potential and where which formula is utilized is another thing to understand okay now, the regeneration happens in Hydra, that's fantastic. But how does the positional identity is encoded in the Hydra body fragments? Like how does a segment knows that it has to make a head in this region or a basal disc in that region? It turns out there are specific morphogen gradient which acts as a guidance cue. Now, if this is the Hydra, there is the hypotome, a hypostome and this is the basically basal disc there is a foot activation gradient which would activate the foot and there is a head activation gradient which would be basically highest towards the hypotome and decrease over the body. So there are two opposing gradient that exist. So this was a very long hypothesis that, that has been there in the field for several decades. Now the question is how these gradients are really set up, what are these morphogens and how does that happen? So obviously I break the myth, one of the morphogen is wind that you already understand. But let us try to understand this with some classical experiments. So classical developmental biologists do a lot of transplantation experiments. In this case, we talk about a transplantation experiment. In this case, a hypostome part of the hydra, which is a donor hydra, is taken and transplanted into the mid segment of another hydra. And guess what happened? Uh, entire secondary body axis is formed. So another new head is regenerated in that case. So obviously this portion which was grafted has the capability to induce the head. That means it has some sort of head inducing molecule within that tissue segment. Now the question is how does people know that there is a gradient from the hypostome if we go towards the basal disc? Now, again, transplantation experiment. In the second kind of transplantation experiment, what happens is a basal disc is transplanted into the body segment. Now, in that case, a basal disc is formed instead of a head. That means already in the foot of the hydra, there are some kind of foot activating molecule that triggers the uh, formation of the basal disc. So this is amazing. But this really doesn't tell you that there is a gradient which exists. So a sequential grafting experiment is required. In this case, what would happen? So not the hypostome, a region which is a little bit below than the hypostome would be transplanted. So it's a sub hypostome transplant. So now the question is, as we go far from the top part to the lower part, the capability to regenerate the head is decreasing gradually. That already tells us there is a gradient. That is why the concentration of the molecule which can potentially induce a head-like structure or the secondary body axis is decreasing. So this set of experiment tells us that head activation gradient exists in the hydra. How beautiful these experiments are, right? That type point of time, there were no sophisticated molecular biology tools. But one can imagine and really demonstrate that using simple grafting experiments. 
Now, hypostome is a signaling center and it was demonstrated by a beautiful experiment. We are talking about a time where microscopy was not that popular, fluorescence microscopy was not that uh, developed at that point of time. So scientists did very simple experiment. There was a recipient hydra which has the body colored by a India ink. Uh, it's easy to do. And the hypostome is transplanted into this particular hydra. Now you can see the hypo hypostome would eventually uh, form that particular secondary body axis, uh, another bud with a head. So in that case, scientists question that where does this tissue from, from the uh, uh, bud coming from? Like is it coming from the hypostome? Is the hypostome proliferating and giving rise to more and more tissue that constitute the head? Or is it the tissue from the uh, recipient which is induced by the hypotome? Hypostome. So now they found out all the tissue in this bud kind of region is mostly labeled with India ink. That simply tells us that these tissue which regenerated a head or a secondary body axis in this case is actually coming from the recipient. So we have grafted the hypotome. The hypostome didn't change its overall volume. That simply tells us that there is a signal that is coming from the hypostome that triggers these kind of effects in the recipient. So donor has the signal, recipient responds to that signal. Again, a classical paradigm of the morphogen gradient. It was also shown that this nature of signal is quite soluble because when the hypostome was transiently touched and later on removed, it can still induce this kind of head segment. So overall, this experiment shows that hypostome is a potent signaling center. The job of the hypostome is like an influencer. So it influences, but it doesn't get influenced itself. Anyway, important points regarding hypostome function, which we have to remember from an exam point of view. Hypostome can induce host tissue to form the secondary body axis and the hypostome produces the head activation signal that we already understand there was a head activation gradient. The hypostome is the only self-differentiating region in the hydra and the hypostome also produces a head inhibition signal that we would understand eventually. So once a head is formed, it would by all means prevent the head formation near it. So if every tissue in the hydra is capable of forming a head, how does the head form in its own location? That is an interesting question, isn't it? But let me clarify that this head activation gradient was constituted by wind 3 and the wind beta catenin signal. It's actually a wind gradient that helps to form different regions. So wind 3 is pretty much restricted to the hypostome region. So wind 3 is the key molecule that is emitted out of this signaling center. So in last slide, we talked about a particular molecule that has to be coming out of the hypostome for it to be a signaling center and that molecule is wind 3. Now it turns out that wind 3 triggers the wind beta catenin signaling and that lead to the formation of these head part. So obviously in an experiment where beta catenin is misexpressed, in that case you can see the head kind of uh, regeneration all across the body axis. It's kind of like having head all over the body. So this misexpression experiment proves that wind beta catenin signaling is necessary for these kind of head regeneration or head formation. Now, grafting experiments also provided the evidence of a head inhibition gradient. Remember this experiment where the hypotome, hypostome was transplanted from, uh, from a donor to a recipient into the middle of the body and it lead to a secondary axis formation. We already talked about it, right? It brings us that kind of idea that hypostome has the capability to induce a host tissue. Now the thing is, if the same experiment is done and a hypostome from a donor hydra is transplanted in near the hypostome of another recipient hydra, of an intact hydra, it turns out there is no body axis formed. Though the hypostome of a donor hydra was capable of forming the body, uh, body axis, secondary body axis, it cannot do it. Because already, in addition to give rise to a head activating signal, there was something in that recipient hydra that prevented the hypostome to create another head. Now again, 
if this experiment was done in an injured hydra where they cut the head out again they put the uh, hypostome into that injury just below the injury site no secondary body axis formed this again tells us there is already a head inhibition gradient which is highest at the place of the hypostome and gradually decrease so that is why just decapitating the head and transplanting the hypostome near the uh, head region doesn't form another entire body axis so this tells us the entire regeneration is sculpted by head activator as well as inhibitor gradient foot activator and foot inhibitor gradient as well so all these kind of alternative cross correlating and mutually inhibitory gradients exist during the regeneration of hydra so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up you can get more flashcard and notes in our website facebook page or in instagram page all the links are provided in the description please support our channel using super thanks we need your little bit support to make these kind of videos so please, please support us. Your $2 support is more than enough. It, it's motivation for us. So see you in next video.